This is from a film I shot a couple of years ago. I shot on Sony A7S II. Rather than apply Magic Bullet film to it in uh, S-Log3, by the way. So this is a log, log shot. So I'm going to apply Magic Bullet looks to this clip. And I basically want to do the same kind of film process to this, but I know that this was shot log, so I can start right away by identifying that aspect of my footage here. So whereas in Magic Bullet Film, we had video flat and log, here in Magic Bullet Looks, we have this huge list of inputs. So I can go down to S-Log3 as my input. What happens here, this is just kind of interesting right off the bat. This doesn't make the image look good, but what this does is it makes the image look like a digital version of the light that was present on the day, which is kind of neat. We have modeled the fact that the light on the day was brighter, you know, than the maximum sort of normal exposure, right? Because we shot on log, we captured a huge broad dynamic range. You can see our bright blue sky back here has values, you know, has HDR values. And those values are being preserved through the entire Magic Bullet Looks pipeline. Since <clears throat> version 1.0, we've always done all of the processing for Magic Bullet Looks in linear floating point. If I just apply an exposure effect, and start bringing down the values, you can see that even though it looked overexposed, all those values are preserved there. And we, we've been doing that since day one. Now, well, let's actually just jump into, into film. What we did in, in Magic Bullet, all of the sort of presets in Magic Bullet work on this idea of this row of tools down here that are processed from left to right. This look is the sum total of all of these tools, but the order matters. The point is that every preset is essentially kind of a bespoke, unique color corrector, just like nodes and resolve. It's like every one of those does a job and the order and the settings all kind of matter. And when you apply a preset, we always pre-select one of the tools that we think is going to be the most useful one for you to adjust. So what that means is that instead of having one Magic Bullet Film tool, we actually have two. Because why not actually give you some extra control over the, the negative and the print and allow you to do stuff in between? So I can apply the film negative, and then I can apply the film print tool, and the combined total will match the results from Magic Bullet Film, but now I have the extra ability to do stuff in between. So for example, now I can say, remember before when I adjusted that exposure, let's do that again. So let's overexpose this film, and let's remember that digital example of overexposure, we had the peaked out white sky, and now let's look at a more filmic overexposure, and you can see that I'm holding a lot of detail. I can still see his eyeball, even though I'm overexposed by four stops. That's just like that example where I was multiplying all those layers together. If I put that exposure in between the neg and the print, I get a slightly different look. Now, this is an emulation of pulling the film stock, rating the film stock for a slower speed. I can do the same thing. I can underexpose the film stock, right? and get a different look. Maybe that one's not so great. But that is a different look than underexposing the uh, the neck. So there's all kinds of fun things I can do here, including jump into some of the tools like a vignette or one of any of the many ways that Magic Bullet can do stuff that lots and traditional color correction can't really do, right? So one of my favorite ones is this haze flare tool, which because of, so there's so much bright light in the sky, it's a little overpowering, but if I just reduce it down a little bit, you can just get this kind of nice idea that like a little bit of light was kind of spilling around in the camera there. And I can also, like I said, insert corrections in between uh, the neg and the print. So this would be kind of how I would tackle a film emulation. We still have all the same, you know, in looks where I wanted to like exercise a little more control over it. And I still have all the same film negative and print stock. We can go for like a, uh, a Fuji look here. For the longest time, I think people really looked at looks as kind of this like very heavy barbecue sauce for, for their image, where it was just like it was going to dominate the flavor and that was kind of the only way to use it. But seeing people feel comfortable to just dip in and use a little bit of it in one part of their color pipeline and a little bit of it somewhere else, that was always my intention.